The Alberta Municipal Health and Safety Association has developed this orientation video as an overview of your employer's health and safety management system. Health and safety is everyone's responsibility. From senior management to each and every worker, your employer is committed to protecting your health and safety and that of all your co-workers. You'll be expected to work safely and ensure that your co-workers are working safely also and in accordance with any and all policies and procedures. The Alberta Occupational Health and Safety Act Regulation and Code helps protect your health and safety at work. The Act provides the authority for the regulations and code. The regulation provides broad provisions which set a minimum requirement to ensure the protection of the worker. The code provides technical requirements in creating a safe and healthy workplace. Your safety program has not only integrated these three legislative requirements, but also other pertinent legislation. Copies of the Occupational Health and Safety Act, Regulation and Code are all accessible to everyone. Ask your supervisor or manager for the location of the nearest copy. The Occupational Health and Safety Act sets three main rights we all have, regardless of our job task. The first right is the right to refuse unsafe work. If you feel a situation is unsafe, notify your supervisor immediately. The second right is the right to know or the right to be informed about actual or potential dangers in the workplace. The third right is the right to participate in the workplace health and safety program. Know that you are obligated to refuse unsafe work and you will not get into trouble by doing so. Your employer's legislative compliance comes to you in the form of the safety manual. The manual outlines various policies, procedures, roles and responsibilities pertinent to all employees. It also serves as a reference tool if you're unsure of something. The safety policy expresses commitment to you regarding health and safety. It also outlines general responsibilities based on job title, the obligation of legislative compliance with particular reference to Alberta's Occupational Health and Safety Act regulation and code, and the purpose and objective of the health and safety program. As was mentioned earlier, the safety policy outlines general responsibilities. Management and supervisors' responsibilities are as listed. Understand the safety policy and the Occupational Health and Safety Act regulation and code to educate their employees in safe work practices and to ensure employees use required protective devices and equipment and follow safe work procedures. To advise employees of known potential or actual hazards and how to isolate, prevent, remove or control them. Arrange for medical treatment of their employees when injury or illness occurs. Report and investigate all incidents and make recommendations for prevention of similar incidents in the future. Carry out regular inspections of the workplace to ensure a safe and healthy environment. Set a good example. Employees also have seven general responsibilities. Their responsibilities are to read and comply with a safety policy, safe work practices, rules and procedures, and Occupational Health and Safety Act regulation and code. To use safety equipment and devices and wear personal protective equipment to immediately report to their supervisor any unsafe conditions or unsafe acts that jeopardize the individual's safety or the safety of other workers. To take every reasonable precaution to protect the safety of other workers and yourself. To make suggestions for incident prevention. Set a good example. Your employer is committed to providing a working environment free of violence and recognizes the potential for workplace violence and other aggressive behavior directed towards you. Workplace violence is to be reported to your supervisor. Additional training may be appropriate depending on your department. There may be times you'll be working alone and the following steps are to be taken. Delegate a designated contact person. This is someone who knows where you are and when you're expected back. Keep some form of electronic communication near you, such as a mobile radio, telephone, or cell phone. A hazard is something that has the potential to harm you. All employers strive to control identified hazards, and how this is done is by informal and formal hazard assessment reviews. In order to perform the job tasks safely, Safe work procedures or safe operating procedures have been developed for various job tasks and equipment. There are two types of maintenance, reparative and preventative. Reparative maintenance is repairing equipment as it breaks, 
If a tool or equipment breaks while you use it, stop using it, lock it out, and report it to your supervisor immediately. A commonly known preventative maintenance program that not only applies to your employer's fleet vehicles but also your own personal vehicle is vehicle oil changes. Equipment and tool preventative programs are completed as required by the manufacturer's specifications. Your supervisor will review with you if any of the equipment or tools you'll be using are part of a preventative maintenance program and your responsibilities pertaining to it. Injury reporting procedures are simple. If you hurt yourself, tell your supervisor immediately. The extent of the injury will determine the action to be taken by your supervisor. If first aid is required, first aid is to be administered and the first aid report, which is a legal requirement, must be completed. If you need to seek medical attention, your supervisor will give you a Workers' Compensation Board employee form to be completed. Your supervisor will explain the particulars of the timeline for the form's completion. An incident is any unplanned, undesirable event which resulted in or could have resulted in harm to people, damage to equipment, or property. It includes work-related injuries, occupational illnesses, and near misses. The purpose of conducting an incident investigation is to provide a systematic effort to establish all relevant facts and determine why an incident occurred, so appropriate action can be taken to prevent it from happening again. There is an incident investigation process which your supervisor will be informing you about. It is your responsibility to report the incident to your supervisor, including near misses. We recognize that there is a risk of an emergency. To ensure preparedness for emergencies, Emergency response procedures have been developed. Various employees will be delegated to take lead roles in certain situations, for example, area wardens and first aid attendants. Training will be provided to you as applicable to your job position and will teach you what to do, who to contact, and how to get help. Workplace Hazardous Material Information System WIMIS, as it is commonly known, is a nationwide system that is designed to give employers and employees information on hazardous materials with which they may come into contact with. It's important that employees know the safe use, handling and storage of all controlled products they use as part of their everyday job. Training and adequate resources are available to all employees to ensure they have the necessary knowledge and skills they need to accomplish their work safely. Safety meetings are one of the ways to encourage and promote safety awareness and exchange of safety information. Safety meetings can take the form of informal meetings such as tailgate meetings or a formal sit-down meeting. A comprehensive safety inspection program which takes into account informal and formal inspections are strictly maintained. An informal inspection is the responsibility of all employees. It is done continuously throughout your shift. A formal inspection is a documented inspection which is a scheduled event. It is usually performed by management in conjunction with designated employees and sometimes with experts in various fields. A health and safety committee is a group of employees and management representatives working together to identify and solve health and safety problems. The committee is an important communication link between workers and management. Health and safety committees meet at regularly scheduled times and discuss safety topics such as incident trends, inspection results, proactive approaches to safety matters, and concerns brought forth by the employees. Ergonomics is the science of adapting work processes and conditions to fit the physical capabilities of workers. The goal is to reduce the incidence of musculoskeletal injuries, or MSI. There are risk identification, assessment, and control procedures as part of a commitment to MSI reduction. If you ever have a concern, contact your supervisor or the safety coordinator. It is unfortunate, but sometimes employees purposely and willfully do not follow safety precautions. And as such, disciplinary action is the result. These actions may range from a verbal warning to dismissal. In conclusion, take part in safety discussions and never hesitate to raise a safety issue or identify a hazard or concern. You're an important part of a team, and your opinion counts. Safety is an attitude, a shared responsibility. We hope your relationship is a long, prosperous, and safe one. We're rolling. Charlie, we're rolling.
I'm not playing it until I see some pylons all around. Thanks, Charlie. Hard hats. Steel-toed boots. Safety vests. I dig those safety glasses, too. Health and safety is an issue, one that's meant for you and me. Accidents don't need to happen when rules are followed to a T. Don't forget to play it safe, give health and safety its fair due. If you don't, you're just asking for the occupational health and safety blue. Stay safe, all you groovy cats. The Alberta Municipal Health and Safety Association, the preferred health and safety training body for the municipal sector.